Good afternoon and welcome to uh, Isha Rugby Club. Apologies for a slight delay on the commentary on the M25. The only thing that we sort of missed. Big shot. Right to start this game. Sets the tone nicely for the crunch. Right, we're just about in position. Goodness me. Go. What a morning. Sponsored by the M25 and the train strikes, and we're just about here. Sam Roberts alongside Will Roberts. And I'm delighted to be here just about Isha Rugby Club. Just about staving off the rain at the moment. Over on the far side, there's a, a large bank of black cloud, which could be coming our way. But this is scrum time. Two big packs here, Will Roberts. Massively, and it's 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 going to be a real battle of that front row. Jabay and Jockey against Billy Sauer especially. Crunch. I think on this near side could uh, certainly Bons. cause some issues. It'll be uh, you and Davis to feed this in and try and get it in and out as quickly as possible for England. And they do that. The English scrum is under severe one, one, pressure. Reset. A reset on the scrum. 1.5 meters. Crouch. Bonds. Sit. Scrum half yard Davis to put this in. Slightly better for England. Better platform. Ball goes left. Side. All the way left onto the uh, into the hand of Burn on the left hand side. Kinder ball goes out into touch on the full, and France will get the uh, the line out. A little bit of a sign of intent there. That axis of uh, of Sean Kerr and Rory Taylor working really well there. Jonathan Pendlebury opting on using Kerr as a 12 plays a lot of rugby at 10 for Whitgift and you can see the sort of distribution that he's able to do there releasing Rory Taylor in that little bit of pocket of space and uh, releasing that back three Humphreys, Byrne and Kinder who can really get going if they get a bit of real estate in front of them Scrappy saved by England oh looks nice flat goal. Pollock think he might have knocked the ball on newly signed uh, Junior Academy contract, Henry Pollock. Sorry, sorry, 
Seven on his back, he's worth watching. Many people interested in the exploits of Henry Pollock. But on that occasion, he uh, knocks the ball on. It is a little bit tacky. You can well appreciate the ground down here at Isha Rugby is... Uh, it's had a large amount of rain on it over the last 24, 48 hours. And the footing of this scrum is going to come under a load of pressure. Barnes. Put in for France this time. They were dominant in the last Six. two scrums. I imagine they might want to keep it in a little bit longer here. Break from the back is duck here. And they combine well. France, good cover tackles from England. Just about shut the door. Large frame of Gwimbus. Number. Makes a little bit of an inroad and Motassi puts the ball on the end of his boot and it's going to bounce very awkwardly. England just about clear it up. He'll come back for the penalty. Good work from Rory Taylor under real pressure after an excellent nudge there for offside. Motassi. Similar sort of kicking game to that Five, of the senior one, team. Offside. Trying to put England under pressure when they're on the front foot and it's a delectable ball over the top and nothing Rory Taylor Shot could off. do other than try and usher it out of play yeah the shot has been called the tee is on Robin Takola out of the van club RC van we will uh, have a, a little look at this and, and potentially get our opening points just while we're watching this will Roberts are, are we going to see uh, a representation of the senior side in these more junior clubs, uh, ju junior setups. I, I, I'd imagine so. I think both both teams are extremely expansive. France coming off the back of a, a really confident uh, win against uh, Italy uh, a, a few weeks ago, uh, 73 uh, 14 was the score in that match up. Uh, Italy, a, a prominent under 18 side uh, to begin with. England haven't had too many tests is of course a, a friendly as well for the upcoming uh, Six Nations in the sights of both teams so uh, it's, uh, certainly one for, for players and, and teams that like to experiment that little bit and try and get a good groove after being apart from each other for so long. Robin Takola the uh, successful kick and the ball back in the hands of Rory Taylor the man out of the London Irish shirt uh, academy he's uh, struggled a lot with uh, injury this year and he did play a part in that premiership finals day ball over the top and into the hands of Wasserman he's one to watch he's a pocket rocket and uh, won't need too many opportunities in which to give it a go tackles come in Carry back. Wait. and the kicking game of France into action once more Connor Byrne another streak of lightning doesn't need a second opportunity although the pass to Taylor isn't as accurate as he would have wanted <laughs> tackle comes in high the referee agrees the stand on the far side almost shouted it in unison a little bit a little bit frantic from uh, England they, they get away with things of the ill discipline of France but still not entirely how they want to set up Kick to touch isn't ever so ambitious. We're just being handed an umbrella, which uh, might come into action a little bit later. Thank you very much. Somebody falling down the bank in front of us here. Oh, it's over the back and it's uh, exploited. We'll look at the counter ruck from France. It makes things difficult for England. England's white shirts muddying themselves by the second is going to be a hard right, afternoon's right. graft the ball is kicked deep oh, and it sits up does it go into touch the referee agrees it must have just touched the line it wasn't far away again it's it's England off uh, off the first phase just failing to, to keep that clean ball France uh, trying to exploit them at the ruck and they've got a, a really big pack and can move as well it's something that England are gonna have to be wary of this afternoon Kepu Tuipalotu with the put into the scrum line half broken by the blonde haired Ben Raj, uh, Redshaw and there's a little bit of space here for Taylor man inside is his half back partner Davis onto the 22 yard line England trundle clear out isn't successful I think France have picked their pocket they have wait wait and the ball is kicked towards us on this bank and uh, 
almost makes us but there's a little bit of the uh, intent from England and a little bit of opportunity for uh, for us to talk about just how good they have they could be this afternoon absolutely it's uh, all, almost out of nothing Taylor just finding that extra little pocket of room and that the support the support plays really strong but France just uh, on the back foot still managing to clean up nicely defensively and they've managed to get the ball off the line out as well yeah. Oud comes forward with the ball his front row partner Boulier has the ball taken off him England suddenly Davis sees a little bit of space ball is a, it's a great kick right into the corner Wasserman has to watch it over his head much better really good spotting of space from Yain, uh, Yain Davis he's a uh, a real game manager does that for for Bath and Millfield alike he's uh, been really really strong this season proving his uh, his old head on uh, on young shoulders there it was uh, a few inches away from a 50 22 but France will uh, will get the ball albeit under a lot of pressure yeah, Leo Boyer out of the Grenoble club playing at hooker he will get the throw in he needs to get these darts correct he does so Samba comes down with the ball and a maul is formed. France trying to uh, rearrange themselves and trundle a bit further forward. Short ball, trying to improve the angle. Takola, some hard yards from him. Jabea Jockey, loose head. Oh, the ball is snuck out. First one holding on. And the referee says there's a penalty there, so two offences. I think they weren't allowed to play two people or two. Thought he had a little bit of a, a look see down on. this short side. <laughs> Taylor is going to uh, nudge this one as close as he possibly can to that corner flag. And this is a good examination, a good opportunity for England. The combination of Finn Baker and, and Tom Burrow will be marshalling that line out. They've got uh, Jack Bennett in there as well, who's handy in the row, so a, a fair few jumpers that can be of utility here. Oh, ball is overthrown once more. Uh, England to get the advantage because it was spilt on that overthrow. It is a feature of under-18s rugby. I have to say, having watched a fair bit of it, the overthrow, the mistimed jump or the misthrown pass at the line-out, it does mean that sometimes we get really good passages of play springing forth off the back of a liner it's kind of like a it, it looks bad but it's kind of a bonus to the game a bit more space i agree and well for for, for capu tutelotti who's played a, a lot of his rugby at uh, eight this season uh, for harrow uh, a little bit for london irish as well but he's transferring into that hooker role a bit more shorter in, in stature and that throw in potentially his Achilles heel when it comes to that position they see him as a hooker don't they they do and and you'd be inclined to agree Crunch. with his uh, with his with his frame Crunch. and build but his explosive power is gonna make Six. him a really really dynamic front rower Davis again the England pack under a huge amount of pressure Davis does get the ball away Kerr combines with uh, red short Newcastle Falcons man a little bit of space oh and England are through and I think it's that man, Lucas Schmidt, isn't it? It is a real big game player. Seems to score a lot in big occasions. A, a try on, on final stay for Quinns. A, a winning score against Saracens in, in Gloucester in uh, club colours as well. Lucas Schmidt translates that form into the international scene and gets England's first points of the day. If your rugby knowledge goes back to Rotherham and uh, his father, Mike Schmidt, you will know the name, you will know the frame, you will know the way that he likes to play rugby. Definitely on the front foot. And Lucas Schmidt, who's uh, tied very firmly to the mast down at Harlequins and a real future for that club there, opens England's try scoring account with a plump. Rory Taylor adds the extras and that's a little bit more like it the uh, crowd and it's a good crowd down here at Isha has a, a smile on its face now fascinating uh, contest this it, England really do have the uh, potential to score tries but this France side which to be fair is difficult to find out about they come from a number of different places it's a completely different side than the one that was uh, playing last time out certainly by the looks of it uh, have uh, 
have England measured this afternoon we should have to see how it goes yes. Davis is going to lift this into the sky good take from Mosk safe under that high ball France's power in the uh, in the forwards comes into its own again 50-22 and Tassi fires the ball out the call to the referee is that the 50-22 was on Point but it didn't points. make it Connor Byrne thumps the ball in return and the chase has to be good up they come France are going to see an opportunity here and they're going to break tackle from Kerr France out to Vassaman Vassaman takes them on tackle from Humphreys wearing 14 on his back Tom Humphreys uh, used to scoring tries not uh, potentially defending but he'll have his defensive work cut out from the afternoon. ball is stripped by England and all of a sudden the human cannonball that is Louis Trevitt gets a little bit of an opportunity Pollock good hands Taylor through the gap England are humming at the moment and away they go down that long short side Redshaw I think it is he's got the score it's it hard work from Rory Taylor just a hold up play good interlink between him and Pollock as well and doing exactly what a fly half should do just straightening up and giving it to his outside centre who's played a lot of 15 this season found the, the, the try line on many occasions for Newcastle Falcons and said for alike and he, he does in the, the white shirt again today a yeah, good team score transition of course the power perhaps came from the turnover catching France a little bit out of shape and England when they connect they're razor sharp talk for a moment about the half-back options that uh, England have you, you there's a pair on the bench who play club rugby together but you're not surprised to see Davis and Taylor together uh, I think I think especially with uh, Davis has, has been really in form this season uh, Will Wooten on the bench who's uh, captained England under 18s before has played in the Premier Rugby Cup for sale this season as well so certainly got a future ahead of him uh, but o o Ollie Davis o on the bench under 17s boy he had an excellent Prem Rugby Cup final scoring a hat-trick uh, at, at outside centre but uh, usually a, a fly half of Kirk and Grammar as well so there's a massive amount of competition and, and also someone like uh, 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 Josh Bellamy who's uh, who who's not even included in this 24 Declan Murphy at, at Saracens as well uh, Archie McParland of course um, uh, also not featured so there's a uh, a, a lot of players who are who are missing out in this England under 18 squad at the moment it's definitely an embarrassment of riches for, for Jonathan Pendlebury a halfback that's the voice of Will Roberts at Young Rugby on many social media channels the place to know about schoolboy and young rugby moving into the professional Step game the fantastic social Step media the account ball. lifting the lid on so much content so Step much the behind the scenes interviews and filming and, and uh, insight into schoolboy rugby and we're delighted to have him alongside of us a uh, huge amount of knowledge about where these players are coming from and and indeed not just the players out on the pitch but those that are missing out and I'm sure they're watching the rugby YouTube channel I'm sure being looked at this afternoon by many interested spectators France are gonna try and see if they can find a, a hole in the fence Jean Mosques is the man at 15 Tassi at uh, scrum half just getting his hands on the ball at the moment looks a little bit of a character he's uh, been trying to put a few players off at line out time and things I've been watching him Burn is gonna try and weave his way through lovely offload England again just starting to get things going forwards and backs combining Davis to Taylor takes it to the line out the back it goes a little screen in play and I think the uh, the French outside centre is going to be in a bit of trouble here Braubori oh, I thought they might have a look at, and there's a little bit of afters from Henry Pollock who uh, takes exception to uh, Henry Vassaman and all oh, they come in and oh, they're just they're just practicing what they learn at school the old trickle or four a GCC French coming into its own right now. 
can't say I'm not too surprised that Henry Pollock started that. I told you, yeah. <laughs> Is he good Go. at it? Yeah. <laughs> Henry, Raphael, Joe, you come as well. I think the two two captains are, are, are getting dragged in uh, here, Darkie and, I don't and want Pollock. To play from your team or from your team. Pass the message on to your teams. Once the whistle goes, stop. Understand? Same message for them as for you. So pass on that message to them. Johan Wasserman, who uh, does look like uh, one of those friends that you yeah, might have, who might be shorter noise, than everyone else, but it's, it's all about the fight and the dog. And uh, he looks like he's up for it today, and he's not going to be—he's uh, not going to take any backward steps. This French uh, left winger. Time on. <coughs> Deliberate lock on. Marks here, Henry. Brief thought about a quick tap, but uh, they decide to uh, pump it down the uh, the touchline. Rory Taylor's boot doing the honours. The wind just picking up slightly, going uh, from from left to right across the pitch. That could potentially provide some different tactics in terms of kicking game. And the moment the handling of England that's proving to be fruitful. It is, and it wor works its way all the way up to Jack Kinder on that left wing. There was a lovely miss move. Sean Kerr, a first receiver that time. As has been mentioned, the uh, Whit Gift. Uh, fly half playing in the center for England at the moment but that gives them options of course there is Kerr his pass is brilliant Connor Byrne is lined up by Vassaman who still has that conversation ringing in his ears from earlier and France have turned the ball over well Gwimbus comes forward as though it might have been knocked on referee says no Boulier gets a chance to go again large frame of December, I think it is, and Gwimbus combine. Slightly isolated. England come through, but Motassi gets the ball away. Kantisamba again puts his head down. Motassi thinks he finds Rasman in a bit of space. He does. Oh, the offload is clever. Inside Matassi, men with him. France are going to open them up here. Robin Takolar is going to score for France. And that's a good response from Les Bleu. It really is. And it, and it all comes from the, the strong one-up runners that France were able to employ. Nguibu, Kante, Samba, Brits, Darkier all being used on this short side in quick succession. Good ball presentation as well. Meant that Matassi had... a. Uh, quick ball at his at his at his feet and that pass unlocking the the defense and Fasserman with the pace on the outside linking up nicely I watch. lovely offload from Vasserman wasn't it very cheeky really is and, and tackler just on that inside line it's a, a a creative one to try and run knew that he'd get involved later on and he gets the the plaudits and will head into Uh, with 10 points on the board all courtesy of uh, France's number 12 yeah, Robin Tuckola converting his own score I'm just looking around to see whether there's a clock here there isn't a clock here you're, you're concerned as well aren't yeah. you we don't know how long we've played but there we go we will try and bring you we don't have a monitor down here the rain is coming down we don't have a monitor available to us so we can't tell you exactly what uh, you're seeing He's number. coming down pretty seriously now. Time Heaven's just starting to open here a little bit. Motassi's kick is a, a flat one, it's an ugly one, but it will do the job and it will uh, run its way out. <laughs> the 
little word on uh, Kepu Tupolotu. He's uh, scored a fantastic try in the final uh, in the finals day. Under 17 as well. Got another year of that yet, young lad. Real, real talent. And he's, uh, his frame and size is uh, not just the only skill he has in his arsenal. He's uh, got a lot of deft touches, good skill, ball in hands. He's uh, certainly one of the full packages. White. Can't be over there, mate. Yeah. Kick downfield is uh, gathered by Mosques. Taylor has uh, dropped back to uh, white, white, white. deputise in the full back uh, position. All that bouncing rugby ball is always going to make a, a fool of you. Diego Jord, uh, oh, lovely feet from the outside half. Just gets himself out of trouble, allows his uh, teammates to come back. And Pollock has thought what I thought he pilfered, but he'd got his hands in the, uh, in the cookie jar. The referee says no. Off feet and uh, a penalty to France. Kick clears the uh, relatively uh, shallow stand on the far side. Uh, really starting to hammer down here. Will make it very difficult. Awkward ball. Taylor works with it. Brings in Kerr. Red short. Little hitch kick. Burn. Man outside him. Had to delay the pass. And away he goes. The Harlequins flyer is in once more this season. Tom Humphreys scoring tries for England. And a big wide smile on his face. What a score that is from England. Just picking off the numbers, doing the simple things extremely well. Connor Byrne holding that pass until it's the last moment possible. And Tom Humphreys, I mean, we, we found out earlier in uh, uh, across the training week in, in testing that he is the quickest by far over 40 metres in this England squad. Proving it just there, really got up his 0-60 to 60 extremely well. And, uh, England reaping the rewards of uh, of their speedsters out wide, and again, it's uh, another really well worked score from the uh, England back line. I mean, there's, there's rain and there's this. <laughs> really, the you're doing a very good job trying to talk amongst it. It is belting it down. Rory Taylor's concentration has to be held as well. Unfortunately, he hangs it out to the right. And uh, if the pitch wasn't wet to start with, my goodness. England's lead is res restored. Diego Jard's left boot is going to get us underway. Well taken in the conditions. That's right, that's right. The French and the referee as well to help uh, the visitors. Yes. Davis is uh, going to dig this one out and pop it into the sky and along with the uh, rain, the ball comes down. Mosques as well always Jewel. tricky for fullbacks Motasi is going to uh, examine Connor Byrne and here goes Humphreys the uh, try scorer little step and away he goes he's got Byrne with him oh it goes through the legs of Mosques oh but brilliant response from the Frenchman up he comes manages to stay in field as well behind the screen the uh, kick from the left boot across the pitch Jack Kinder Midlands Central lad Midlands West my apologies struggling to read my notes in the uh, in the rain 
Nicholas West, of course, uh, formerly of Worcester. Don't use your hands. Game firmly being played in the middle portion of the pitch. France come down with it. Tassi's uh, pointing at his back line. Point scorer. No! Tokola comes uh, Side entry, from the ball and uh, Henry Pollock again. Seven. Involving himself and uh, getting penalised. A lot of rugby being established in that middle third. As you'd imagine, both sides actually probably don't really want to be playing with the ball at the moment. It's uh, extremely difficult to try and set up any form of uh, momentum through phase play in this sort of condition. So both sides more than happy to, to boot the ball back to their uh, opposition and see how they want to deal with things. So imagine it could uh, therefore end up proving quite scrappy and, and be a case of whoever makes the least amount of mistakes. Francis Pack is being beckoned into position. Ball is uh, kicked deep, Vassaman is uh, after it. Throws it in field. Mosk again, the kick forward, it's a little cheeky one and he gathers it, this brilliant from France, it's another kick, Matassi's after it, how's about this from France, what a oh. score that is! Cheek, cheek. It's going to be checked but cheek, cheek. the work there from Zan Mosk is uh, absolutely exquisite, trying to pick up that ball off, the, off his shoelaces at, at that sort of speed in these conditions and then have the, the wherewithal to, to dab the ball okay, which number is it? into the dead ball Nine area. Nine. Let's just have a listen to what the referee and uh, his assistant are saying. From the first kick, yeah. Nine is in front, and he's That's the one that scored the try. So no try, we're going back for in front of the kick. <laughs> no England, try, uh, Get a let off. Number nine in front of the kick. I'll give you time, it's right. Got to be aware in that yeah. pocket in behind where you'd imagine where you and Davis would supposed to be. It's that little chip over Off the top, side. but we have to marshal that well. I don't think they're necessarily expecting that right. considering the, the conditions, but with uh, with the way that France play, you can uh, you can imagine that they could play with anything. Oop. Ball is going to make it into the car park. There we go. Thanks, mate. Good process. work off the uh, top of the line out secure ball and, and just as I spoke it was stretched. good work from Boulier the hooker you can see just how much of a bar of soap this ball is proving it's an old cliche but right now at the moment it is incredibly difficult Taylor the ball popped through France again, put it on the end of their boot and it goes all the way out this time from the kick and they'll come back and England will feel as though that's credit for them. Neither side, as I mentioned, wanting to play with ball at the moment. There's uh, <laughs> very little need to. Uh, they're going to just try and keep on kicking it away, kicking it away and those kicks are coming scrappier and scrappier Sick. and Sick. therefore it's, uh, it's just it's gained becoming a little bit more stop-start. Kepi Tuivalotu drying the ball off with a towel which is absolutely soaking wet and uh, unsurprisingly not straight at the line-out. We might have a few more of them uh, this afternoon.
Talk as well, uh, well, Roberts, about the options England have in, in the back row. I mean, I know we've got some absolute superstars at under-18 level out there, but there's a few people on the bench and, and maybe not even selected uh, this uh, this afternoon. Yeah, I mean... Uh, uh, Crunch! I was going to say in the build-up that Boys! this back row for England at the moment are probably the three most Six! informed players in, in the country at under-18 level. Uh, Bennett, Pollock and Schmidt. Yeah. So they've got Reuben Logan on the bench who was called in late on as as well as uh, Frank Chatterton who I think uh, pulled out uh, late on as well he was included in the initial squad for this game so there's uh, a, a lot of options for, uh, for for England to try and utilize uh, uh, in the back row for sure a really good take there by England and this what? has given Rory what? Taylor an option to kick the ball and return it to France and I think we know what's going to happen white blue 50-22 is the shout, and it is a 50-22. Really good kick. Crossfield from Zan Mosh as well. And uh, this new law, I really like this one. There's a, a few arguments about some of the new laws that have come in, but this is a really good one, uh, this 50-22 law. Step off, please. Promotes that teams need to fill that Step off. Henry, take space in the back with uh, covering one. wingers. and. It, just leaves that little bit of extra room in the in the front line for for defend for attackers to try and exploit. But at the moment, it's just a strong kicking game of France that is uh, separating these two sides. White, white, white. and manages to hold on to the ball. Here comes uh, Mosk. Nope. Mentioned him a lot and uh, growing certainly into this game. Butu. Diego Schurd over the top, it's going to bounce into a puddle and be absolutely hellish to deal with and they pounce on it and carry him over the line and France are going to have a scrum in that puddle and they are going to be uh, interested in getting a, a full seven points out of this. No ball, lads. No ball. No ball. My left. They say I'll wash. I'll wash. Yeah. I'll wash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Tough position, this. England uh, really under the caution. France could uh, back on level terms before the break. Bonds! Scrum has uh, been the ascendancy. Play on, says the referee. They break off the back. The captain, Dockier, hits the deck. Keep the ball alive. England swarm around it. Their white shirts increasingly brown. Stay up, Blue. Once again, you can hear the conditions underfoot are treacherous. Out. England. Tackles rain in as well. Back. Really hard to defend in these sort of conditions. It's difficult to get underfooting and try and halt the momentum of France. It's uh, running strong at the moment with this route one play. There they go. Only needed half a meter space. And they got it. And I think coming up with the ball is Bouillère. I, I could be corrected here. I think the last play was from the hooker. We'll have to see. Joe. Uh, set. So Half we're time. saying Baptiste Britz is the man getting over. My mistake. Uh, we need the scrum, the number seven, when the eight comes out. Yes, we will watch. We will watch. We will watch. So that's interesting. Vassaman's English is being used to communicate to the referee. Dakier called him in to try and translate what he needed to say to the referee. And uh, Takala will uh, oblige and we will go in for half time. The rain is just about stopping. And it is perfectly poised here at Molsey Road in Isha. England under 18, 17, France under 18, 17.
Your thoughts? I'm sure the highlights will run through in this half-time break. But your uh, thoughts, uh, Will Roberts? Absolutely poised on a knife's edge. These two teams uh, are testing each other really well. The final 10 minutes of that game were, were tough with the with the conditions. Kicking was certainly used to, to, to France's advantage for sure. It'll be interesting to see how both teams manage things heading into the half and coming out with a, a plan for the second 35. We're going to try and uh, dry out a little bit and, uh, and leave you to your half-time cup of tea back in a few moments. It's great that Honda, um, as a partner of England Rugby, have come on board to support specifically the work that volunteers do. Um, and events like we're holding tonight are just a great opportunity to recognise the, the great work and the great effort that volunteers put in, and really importantly, to bring them together to have a good time and to say thank you. But actually, more importantly, we should recognise everybody, every one of the volunteers right across the organisation. And when you're building a successful organisation, everybody has an equal role in that. Um, and that's what, that's where we want the reach. The first winner, this is the unsung hero category, ladies and gents. Our first winner is Jodie Hill. Nico <laughs> Volunteering has done so much for me. I found myself completely, probably five years ago, I was so unconfident, I was anxious, I struggled with my, my mental health, and now I can say I actually have a purpose in life and I find myself making other people happy gives me a big purpose. We're gonna move on to our second winner. Uh, this is the victor in the Game for All category. Would you please give an extraordinary round of applause to our second winner, who is Will Gilgrass from Old Spectacular. It's amazing being at Twickenham. Like, it's obviously a really special place to be as a rugby fan. and. It's been incredible to hear the stories of everyone else that's been like nominated, and I mean, like a lot of those people have done incredible things, and to have, like been the person of honour seems a bit silly, but yeah, it's just lovely to be with like people who are all sort of very supportive of rugby and like want to push it forward for more people. Now we are going to move on to our third and final winner of the season, ladies and gents, which is the Beyond Rugby Award. Ladies and gents, our third winner is Arthur Crabtree. It's so great to be announced as a winner. It's an honour. As rugby, we're a pretty prosperous part of society, so it's so great to give back and help where we can. It's given me that confidence to kind of give back and help the little ones. So I coach in the sixes, so I, I love coaching them, and it's great seeing them grow through the club. The one message that I'd give to volunteers, actually there'd be two. One would be, please keep doing what you're doing because the sport just needs you. And secondly, please go away and tell everybody else what a great experience it is and get them involved. You're joining us here at uh, Molsey Road down in Isha. The, uh, <laughs> the clouds are just about parting. We are a half time score of 17 all England under 18 versus France under 18. And we're going to try and run through some of these highlights. And uh, it was a game, uh, Will Roberts, alongside. Interesting uh, watching. This is the first try. England uh, strike and open. Excellent work off first phase. That move between Kerr and Redshaw working really nicely and Schmidt just taking that opportunity to find the opening gap. Excellent work from him but just have a look at this from Sean Kerr just that angle of his shoulders just deceiving the, the French defenders that little bit which meant that they were on the back foot which meant that England could get quick ball and Schmidt could capitalize from it. It all comes from the deceit of Sean Kerr which uh, as a ball handling 12 proves just how useful he can be. Fair enough to have a, uh, a try stamped with a Harlequins uh, badge at this part of the world. Not very far from uh, the stoop. Second try, England are in the mood here, Will Roberts. Again, yeah, it's just superb hands. I think England in that first half just did the basics incredibly well. And this is a perfect example of that. Henry Pollock onto Rory Taylor, just holding and squaring the pass towards Redshaw who in turn provides an excellent finish does really well to keep himself in field in tricky conditions Taylor that catch and pass as well is absolutely superb yeah, and he gets a big pat on the uh, belly from Junior Capoco at the end of it all which is always nice it is indeed uh, yeah looking 
look at the parents in the background that's a lovely shot as well and this is the first French try coming your way as well and and, and if we thought that France hadn't come to play we got a, a firm reminder here that pace from Vassaman just setting France apart it all came actually before that with the the one-up runners that they were they were using in the forward pack just brought real momentum to that French attack and the loop pass over the top to Vassaman just gave them that outside edge and once they had that the the skill and dexterity of this French team was was there for all to see yeah, Takolo with the big dive at the end just see here it was that the England defense that were just constant the pressure that they were having to absorb when France were going route one which meant that that space was there on the outside which the uh, French backs could exploit and uh, here's uh, another uh, look at this fabulous uh, turn of speed by Tom Humphreys and the delay on the pass you liked a lot very similar to that second try for, from England it's it's the basics done really well it's a uh, superb handling for from Taylor and just using Bradshaw who just steps on that outside edge and attracts two defenders which leaves a two-on-one for, for Connor Byrne and Tom Humphreys those two played a lot of rugby with each other over the past sort of 12 18 months which meant that they could uh, they, they could link up really nicely and this was really unfortunate this was the disallowed try and it was absolutely wonderful uh, awareness especially in the conditions to try this out it really was superb work from Zan Mosk to exploit that space in behind just that little dink over the top not necessarily what England were expecting that the bounce was nasty but still managed to pick it up off his uh, off his laces and that Tupo Motassi was uh, just in front of the ball which meant that it was called offside and the try was not awarded you can see him looking around as he's uh, given that one final score uh, of the half and the one that brought us all level it was uh, route one stuff from the men in blue what gives them this score here is just how quick the ball is presented back to uh, Baptiste Brits it's uh, good work from from him to uh, to get that forward momentum and uh, once again it's uh, put us in a nicely poised position So 17 all at the moment and uh, we have uh, a little bit of ET coming your way on Rob Muir. Obviously rugby is a big part of my life. Muir takes two to stop it. Do some coaching as well, which is a huge part of my week. It's very niche, but I like pottery painting. So I like we went the other week with the girls as a like a little group social and painted some pottery. I've got a whole fruit range. So maybe once I finish rugby, I'll go into fruit pottery making. I like to film quite a lot of clips, like through camps and stuff. I would film little clips and I have been editing them. I just love looking back on it and that's the same with photography. Like I really like taking pictures and being able to look back on them and I kind of make, have made some scrapbooks as well which has been really nice. My two lovely flatmates, they are great people as well as rugby players. So I live with Sam Monaghan who is an Irish second row and then I also live with Elizabeth Golden who is a Kiwi fly half. Sam is great, like she's doing a lot of DIY at the minute, like putting up blinds, she did this room, she sanded and varnished her floor, which took like over a week and she had to plaster it all. I would say that Sam is a mixologist or a cocktail maker. She loves making a little espresso martini, which we all like to enjoy in, in moderation, of course. Lizzie likes to work. Well, I don't think she does like to work. She likes to pretend she's working. No, she does actually work really hard. She has like an England job and a 
New Zealand job being a lawyer, long hours as in into the night because she is working at, in her New Zealand time zone. Lizzie also loves to cook. If anyone's cooking us a meal, it will be Lizzie. Like we all go round to each other's houses. Lizzie's normally the main chef. The rest of us will be like sous chefs slash clearing up duties. We are back out. The sun is out as well. It's positively warm at the moment. And England are back out. Henry. France have been in position for a little while. <coughs> a little bit of green onions plays on the uh, PA. Rory Taylor gets us underway in the second half. It looks like uh, Siavela Tolefour has joined us for uh, France. A few changes for them at half time. Doesn't look like there have been any for uh, England, which is quite obvious considering all the shirts are, are discoloured now with the with the mud. Maxine Grenell is on wearing uh, 23 for France as well. One of the few players that actually played in that game against Italy a, a month ago. All that presented for Davis. Taylor has to get the ball away very quickly. France are sniffing here and they're in. And away they go, the man on the outside is Lodro. Can he get the ball down? Oh, wonderful offload at the end for Brown Bohe. France starting real style in this second half. Superb awareness there from Lodro to feed that ball back inside. Arguably the most experienced player in this French side. Started uh, in the summer series in South Africa against Ireland uh, 11 months ago and Broberie also in fine form his third try this season for oh, France uh, superb work from them two linking up just uh, capitalizing in transition something that they've done really well so far today changing from defense to attack oh so quickly and having the wherewithal to, to still convert yeah they're just uh snaffling that ball in midfield good tackle comes in at the end but he just allows his uh, his arm to be free and Maxime Grenell of the Perpignan club his uh, first opportunity to score some points for France the ball out to the right hand side confirmation as well that we have uh, number 17 change in the front row Liam Akrab is on and France are this well and truly in their grasp at the moment. They have started with real aplomb in this second uh, 35 minutes. Baptiste okay. Brits wearing sevens, scored the try just before half time. France a little bit flat, but good hands will get them out of trouble. Away they come through Kante Samba. Kante Samba is sambering his way towards that try line. And the good pick up and goal from the replacement. I think it's Tolafua. It is. Younger brother of Christian Tolafua. You recognize the name? And he's just dotted down in an international game at under 18. But Will Roberts, France have started this second half with, with a real vigor. Again, it's just that that quick ball from from the ruck that unlocks the uh, opportunities for France England constantly on the back foot and with the big runners that the French have at their disposal it's really difficult to stop them once they get that first half break here it came and really good handling and, and footwork there from uh, Kante Samba and once again, it's just that ball presentation and quick speed of ball, which meant that England couldn't get reset and in a position to defend their own five metre line. And wow, it's uh, 12 points in uh, 
a couple of minutes of France, which uh, really changes the. Uh, The, uh, whatever the half-time talk was for uh, England from Jay with uh, two very quick scores Rory Taylor again just going for that nasty little grubber across the floor right on the, the 10 metre line he's done that for the first two kickoffs uh, and uh, it doesn't seem to necessarily be catching France out as he would have hoped Redshaw with a big tackle in the midfield the uh, kick from Mosk was uh, whilst he was off balance. England themselves looking to uh, run the ball in tricky underfoot conditions. Ball is played back to Davis, the scrum half. Big carry from Jack Bennett wearing six on his back. Quick take from Davis, he's going a scurrying. A little rumble from him. Teammate Taylor acts as conduit. Red short. One of the try scorers in the first half for England. To the floor they go. Davis thinks he spies a bit of room out the back. And Mosk is going to have to be very clever here. He gets a face full of Jack Kinder. And the referee says diving on the man and penalises Jack Kinder. Feet his feet says the referee from Davis once again showing his game management something that we're seeing a, a lot more of in uh, in in rugby currently is kicking on the front foot and that is exactly what England were doing there just trying to apply that little bit of pressure to uh, to the French back line and well if it wasn't for Jack Kinder just stumbling off his feet when he got to that collision it, um, uh, I imagine that it would have been a a profitable outcome for England. Yeah, he dives straight on top of the man and off his feet as well. He can attend and he can put the pressure on but he can't go off his feet. Liam Makrab is on for uh, Edward Junior Jabayen in Jock. Ball over the top once again at line out time. Taylor's going to get his uh, dustpan and brush out and try and tidy it up. Tui Pilotu, his uh, London Irish teammate, is uh, on hand to lend his weight. Once again, France's tackles are good and low. Advantage. Referee has spotted a bit of an offside. 17. He said... I think uh, England are about to make their first change. Yes, they are. So that's um, Ian Jones, I think, coming on, and Kinder coming off. Pristine kick. It does stand out, doesn't it? You can spot him a mile off. It really does. And I wonder if that means that we're going to see Connor Byrne on the wing. I think it might Looks be so. Connor Byrne goes to the blind side wing and then Johan Jones, the, the Gloucesterman, uh, in at 15. Johan Jones, the, uh, as the uh, attendance is announced, just over 2,000 people here. Molesy Road and they've uh, enjoyed themselves in the first half and now with the sun out they could hopefully on, see uh, England wrestle this one back from France. But, uh, I was about to mention Johan Jones and uh, started in uh, South Africa last season and it's a Come real on. prospect out of the Dean Close school and in uh, Gloucestershire of course Dean Close uh, producing many a good rugby player. Just slightly fallen out of favour in that 15 shirt. Um, a strong challenge between him and Connor Byrne for, for that starting role. It was uh, wrestled with uh, over the, the summer series as well. And it's interesting that that, that is the battle that, that, that we're looking at. And uh, I imagine it may very well be a battle that we, we continue to see. Uh, maybe translating into the senior side of the course we've got. 
crouch. an embarrassment of riches at the moment when it comes to, to young outside backs uh, it, it, it wearing the rose. Scrum half, the French scrum half, Motassi, who uh, was uh, very conspicuous in the first half. He, he now has uh, a large piece of tissue shoved up one of his nostrils, and uh, I don't think that will stop him being a nuisance around the park. Both uh, front rows just slipping at contact there, and you can't really blame them at the moment. They're in a, they're in somewhat of a swamp on the 22. So it'd be, I think, a case of just trying to get this ball in and out as quickly as possible for, for both sides. So it won't necessarily be a, a contest of who can shove further. Francis' scrum was certainly the uh, one that they enjoyed. He, a bit of a break off at scrum time there. Grinnell doesn't care though, and he uh, hits the deck and gets a face full of uh, Isha Mud. Jones bit of an opportunity to uh, show us what he can do. Muddy a shirt. England just need uh, a bit of time with ball in hand. Humphreys, one of the try scorers from the first half for England, goes looking for the ball, comes in off his wing. Davis is uh, going to try and kick this end over end, but it's going to pop up to the uh, very effective Mosque. That almost goes out. It doesn't quite. The banana kick is going to be in play from Jones. Doesn't go out. France have a bit of a, an opportunity to run here, and that looked a little high. Yeah, Henry Pollock penalised that high ball, but it, it that high tackle, but it was a extremely good awareness there from the Iron Jones at fullback. He knew the 50-22 was on, so it was paramount that he uh, kept the ball in play, and then that banana kick to to then again just try and relieve some form of pressure but ill discipline from Pollock costing uh, England more substitutions for England so Billy Seller and uh, Jack Bennett who are coming off for uh, Ty Raymond and uh, Reuben Logan who wasn't expecting to, to play in this game, only got the call up uh, 48 hours ago, flung straight into onto the bench for the absent Frank Chatterton, I think, and uh, he was certainly looking to, to prove his worth ahead of the uh, under-18s Six Nations coming up. And if you didn't know, Reuben Logan has famous parents. I thought you were going to say them, who they were. Well, Kenny no. Logan and Gabby Logan, I'm sure we uh, might not be here. Kenny might be watching on him with intent. Ruben uh, just signed a professional contract with Northampton Saints. Was originally attached to Midland Central, the former Wasps club. He signed on with Northampton Saints. And it is France at the moment trying to uh, pillage their way into the 22 come in from England but France still present the ball beautifully ball for Matassi the ball over the top it's a delightful kick it's brilliantly taken by Byrne who looks turns and looks at what is in front of him and decides to top the ball down behind his own uh, try line I wonder whether or not he thought about calling for a mark there but he maybe not the presence of mind to think about that yeah it's uh, it was a really tricky kick to, to try and gather and field and Connor Byrne just caught in front of uh, a multitude of blue was, li was left with very little options Long conversation Rush. with uh, Elvira Ibasay, number eight now. Face the uh, captain. <coughs> Dakier has Both gone players. off, and uh, Dakier has actually Dakier has moved into the second row, which is uh, where oh, yeah, he, he right. can also be utilised. So uh, it's actually uh, Ngwimbu has gone off, but uh, a lot of changes within that. Uh, 
French back. I think it is only the skipper and uh, the Baptiste Brits. Yeah, the only two who have uh, remained from the starting 15. So fresh pack to potentially provide a little bit of momentum for the French back line if it gets that far. Ball out wide. Oh, it's been stolen. And here goes Humphreys. No one's catching him. Tom Humphreys has the parish of Isha at his mercy. Well, that's England pulling a bit of a rabbit out of a hat. They were well and truly under the cosh there. And a little bit of over over exuberance from the French meant that Humphreys saw his opportunity and took it with both hands. A real 14 point score there from Tom Humphreys when England were staring down the barrel he managed to read this really well defensively it's a good bit of interplay from France that quick pass from uh, Lodro intercepted and Humphreys he's so quick over those initial 40 meters which meant that he just had the uh, good amount of time to get the ball over the line pointing at the crowd as well always dream of that don't you exactly Pick and someone out Humphreys' um, second score. Done really well today. Taking his opportunities when they come. Few and far between for, for wingers in, in these sort of conditions. But he's when he's had the chance, he's taken them really well. Harry Clark is now on for uh, for England, the uh, Leicester and Denston boy. And I think that means that Kapu Tuipulotu is off. Yeah, that's, not a, that's not a bad substitution. Uh, Harry Clark scored a lot of tries in the uh, under-18 Premiership season. In the Premiership Under 18s League record try scorer beating Harry Randall and Charlie Reynolds West and uh, wasn't even supposed to be in the 24. He's only replacing uh, Jacob Oliver, the, uh, the the Newcastle Falcon, late on again, who's uh, absent and unavailable. So that just shows the, the, the wealth and depth that this uh, England side have at their disposal. Yeah, uh, Jones, yeah. Great kick from him off the uh, right peg pinpoint accurate France will have to put into this line out but that'll be a, a, a piece of credit that England will see themselves in the half back changes uh, Matassi and Jurd coming off and I think it's going to be uh, Duroc and uh, Yanis Brilliant who are probably going to be coming on I wanted Yanis Brilliant to come on there's a, a fine name and I hope he lives up to his uh, his billing doesn't necessarily have the the stature of a fly half but we could see him pulling the strings very shortly oh france tried down the short side slung back in field and england have a little bit of an opportunity here pollock who has a fine turn of pace as well the offload doesn't quite work jones has gone in there to try and make it work good work on the floor there's a bit of pressure that's going to be applied to this chase vassaman Forward he comes, the left winger from France. Good hands again. The young uh, Le Bleu side. Offload off the floor, keeps the ball going, keeps the ball alive. Jean Christophe wearing 16 on his back. Here is brilliant. And it's a nice little kick through. It might work. Brits is over it and he's going to be forced into touch and they'll enjoy that on the far side. Good defensive patience from England, not just absorbing those uh, first few initial challenges. It's something that they uh, were caught out on a fair few times at the start of this second half, just over eager in defence and, and allowing for France to. Uh, to use their quick ball to their advantage but this time just standing off that little bit more allowing France to play their hand and meant that they were able to usher them into touch now Harry Clark on with a potentially slightly more conventional hooker can get the arrows just right at the line out up and under a little bit uh, too long, gives Vassaman a bit of time. Again, 
Good into play. It's able to hold on to the ball. It can go from uh, France. Looks as though it might, the uh, backs might get it, but the uh, forwards hold on to it. That scrappy ball with which to work. England's really targeting that breakdown, trying to slow down this French ball that allows them to play with the flow and fluent behaviour that they have done previously. But look, they're just disrupting that breakdown as, as much as possible and meant that France can't deal with that quick ball. Changes being made as well. Yeah, some, uh, some large frames. That certainly uh, can be said of Junior Kapuku. His, uh, his brothers you may well know uh, one in uh, in Saracens colors and one in Lyon colors and he's uh, on to the field at 19 so it's uh, Ralph McEachran who's come on for, for Louis Trevor and young Ollie Davis wearing 22 come on for Rory Taylor so we're now seeing a, a half-pack partnership of Davis and Davis which I'm sure won't be confusing at all I, I really like the look of Ollie Davis. Starred uh, wonderfully on finals day for sale. And he releases his back line. Off. England creep over the halfway line. All from Davis. I did think he was going to just try and poke this round and through, and he does brilliantly. And into the 22 England tiptoe. Again, it's that management from Johan Davis. The way that he just eyes up that kick at exactly the right time. It's something that's become a real skill of his. Maybe one that goes slightly under the radar. But he puts France on the back foot here. And with this new half pack partnership for the Burt, it'll be interesting to see how they find their way around this. Bit of pressure on the uh, French liner large figure of Junior Kapoka he's going to uh, try and get in the eye line of the uh, of the man with the ball try and get himself up early he can't Brix does well comes down with it secures it for France the moment they lead but only just five points the difference ball is down referee says yes and gives the delight of the Isha crowd Good work. I don't think Junior Kabuka was too far away from uh, causing trouble there. Smothering possession there and, and coming through the mall. A little bit of dark arts from England to, to manage to steal possession from the French. Great work from, uh, from those in white to try and create a little bit of a platform here for England. Great position this for England. Behind on the scoreboard at the moment. No doubt excited. Oh, I spoke too soon. Scrum time collapses. Seventeen, I think it's the, the new man, McEachern, who's just come on. Robin Tackler back on the field, back with kicking duties, and will try and thump this ball as, as long as possible. And he just about gets it now, just before the halfway line. Let's have a look on this. Is it on this near side? It is, yeah. Oh, London Irish man, he gets himself a little tied up there, difficult to see. Just engages that a little bit early, and his, his head's pointing down. It's formed a really good scrum partnership with uh, Brandon Vince uh, London Irish this season meant that their set piece was really formidable not being able to translate that as of yet onto the school onto the international scene line out again is scrappy England capitalize Davis and Redshaw combine behind the screen Pollock involved. Ball is turned over. 
clearly says the referee France! France now on their knees they must release the player Pollock has a little go thinks better of it England's defence is strong ball is knocked on and we will have a scrum down for England How do uh, England uh, get themselves back in front here, Will Roberts? What, what sort of player are we, we, look, are we looking to to steer this ship? certainly think Davis is going to have to back up his experience here. Only still under 17, so a year below uh, the majority of these boys. And I think he's going to try and marshal something here. It could involve uh, Lucas Schmid at eight. Just try and just get that little bit of front foot Crunch. momentum off the back of this scrum and then... Five. Utilise those players outside who have seen little ball in this second half. Might have to be a quick hook here. England scrum was under pressure in the first half. You right? Davis combines with Kerr. Ball looks as though it's gone backwards. The referee says agrees and Davis gets an absolute face full of French player. England have lost 10-15 yards. They go the same way. Things going up in the air here. Yes. Focus is on the, the chase of Tom Humphreys, something they've been working on in training. Kapuku puts uh, a lot of pressure on Darok. The uh, scrum half is equal to the task and forward he trundles. Kapuku almost him. carries him an extra three or four yards for, further forward. Oh, the ball into the midfield, Davis, I thought was on it. Didn't sit up for him and it's, uh, he's got good hands, Ollie Davis, I can tell you that for free. And he just couldn't quite gather that one. Tim, just under Tim. France really just taking it to the line. It's something that they've uh, done throughout the game. It's reaped the rewards with that, that first score from Tackler, a result of that really flat pass over towards Wasserman. But then again... That score from Tom Humphreys came from a, a, a flat pass to the line which the England winger snapped up. So uh, certainly playing with fire when it comes to where those passes are being dealt from the French backs. Crouch! Fair amount of uh, conversation Boys. going on between Darok and Brilliant. Sit! And they will come short side, the rock will uh, pump the ball deep Jones white, white, white. returns the angle is good Mosk is able to bring in brilliant 50, on the quick restart the quick throw in Davis is and I'm going to actually say that's my fault because yeah. I did just say that Davis's hands were very very good and, and, if, up, and if there's any guarantee of anything in rugby, yeah. it's if a commentator calls you out for a particular skill, the next few moments will show that you're not very good at it. I'm sorry. So changes are being made. It's Will Wooten and uh, Frank McMillan who are coming on. Frank McMillan usually utilising the centres for Harlequins. Incredible story. I mean, he uh, was arguably second choice in the centres for Harlequins at the start of this season now finds himself on an England bench uh, superb season for him but I think he's going to get utilised on the wing and it's the uh, the experience of uh, Will Wooten uh, in a, a scrum half replacing uh, Ewan Davis for this final few stretches of play Sit. Did either of those players potentially provide a little bit of spark for England to, to get themselves back into this game Wasserman's pass is uh, brilliantly picked up by Brilliant. Rain is coming down again. Could be a tricky last uh, few minutes or so. Dakie does well into the 22. They break. Oh, and it's going to work again. Oh, McMillan did well to hold on to the ball. Frenchman had hold of his shorts. Davis manages to get the ball backwards. Again, more good carries, more 
good hanging on to the ball here Sean Kerr sees a little gap and kicks the ball through Mosk is uh, again going to get tackled and as he does they put pressure on him and Connor Byrne just having a little word with his relax, uh, opposite relax, number relax. and he ran quite a long way to do that <laughs> it's a little bit of needle there really is it's is this that it's Le Crunch. Whatever, whatever age group you're looking at, this is Le Crunch. It's all, means a huge it's all affected by that Numbers. shot from Reuben Logan, which uh, comes in and just affects the flight of the ball last minute from Mosk. And uh, excellent work from, from the loose forward to uh, get this opportunity now for England. Into the midfield they go. Kerr has to take to a knee to grapple with the ball. Davis's boot is going to be employed. Mosk is back. White, blue, white. Davis has dropped back. White, white. Ball almost sounds heavy off the boot. Vassiman looks downfield. It's a poor kick. Can England potentially capitalise off this? White, white, 18. Jones. Mosk is equal to it. Lovely step from Mosk. It is away. Beautiful. Oh, what a tackle that is! Johan Jones, I think it was on the Frank uh, McMillan, return. In fact. Frank McMillan. <laughs> and that's Frank McMillan's penalty. Pollock is off and running. No hanging about from the Northampton Saint. England have their bit between their teeth. Some great defensive shots going in and just pumping up the adrenaline. Davis, the ball is loose and back and Byrne has to go back for it. Referee says no, no, knock on. England come forward. This is misplaced and France suddenly have it. Vassaman down this short side. 50-22. Ball into the 20 two and it's going to tiptoe its way towards the try line how's the footballing skills oh it's oh. running out of space i think options brilliant couldn't get his hands on the ball huge amount of pressure being applied to it by the chasing jones i think it was it was let's have another look at this oh this is the uh, this is the break fantastic from zan mosks what a tackle from mcmillan really is absolutely breathless from uh, England and France alike. They've taken the, the 22. Time off. Now we have a look at the break here. Time's it is off. brilliant who is chasing this ball. England are willing it to go into touch. A little soft touch on it there, but too much. Jones just about puts enough pressure on him. So he runs out of space. Sean Kerr just uh, receiving some treatment as to why we're having this stoppage but uh, comes off his shin rather than his foot and I think that's just the isn't it retreat blue brilliant points to the sky oh, miscalculation where's the ball bouncing and just about comes down with it. Thank you. Oh, and the referee sees, sees a knock on. Thank you. England with a collective sigh. Thanks, Henry. Have a little uh, break. I think it's uh, Sean Kerr who's down, down again. He, he, he's really been in the wars today always does that uh, <laughs> puts his body on the line I've done a fair few uh, Harlequins under 18s games and, and Sean Kerr is never comes off the pitch not uh, with some sort of injury he really does live life right the on the front line there's the uh, there's, there is the uh, the French management team looking on at the moment they hold a slender lead 
Cedric Laborde in the middle of that. Yeah, he's the one here. The mastermind behind this uh, French under-18s team at the moment. And I think uh, Kerr is going to have to make way, so uh, Rory Taylor will come back on. Wonder if that will change things potentially. It's uh, going to be a complete reshuffle. Oh, yeah, McMillan has come into the centre. To 12. Looks like at the moment, I mean, they might, they obviously might line up slightly differently. Maybe this, this scrummage uh, allows them to do Crunch. something slightly differently, but you're right, there is a bit of a reshuffle. Sit! Rain again, hammering down here at Isha. This move in the in the centre brings in Davis, brings in Byrne. Jones has to try and stop on this surface, which is so difficult to find your feet on. <laughs> Penalty to Wrong France. Entry. Wrong entry at the uh, at oh, the ruck. The referee spotted it. It's good work from England to get to that position, oh, which boy. meant that. The big French pack could just blast over that ruck and cause that sort of issue. We're going to end the second half in a similar fashion to the first with uh, with these sort of conditions. And it certainly favours the French, who will be more than happy just to continue to bang the ball back into the English 22 and, and ask them to play with it. They're certainly in the driving seat. Instead, they're actually going for goal here to take them out of the seven-point reach. Yeah. Can I have a go at this? It's uh, very difficult, not least because of your standing foot. He's going to have to try and put a huge amount of torque through his left boot to uh, get the power from his right. And that's always going to be a slight thought in the back of his mind. About 40 metres this one. The ball has fallen over just to add a little bit of... Uh, Tension to proceedings. He's only got 10 seconds as well, so he's gonna have to take this on quickly. It's a good kick, it's a close kick. Oh, just across the front of the posts. Pollock's gonna come forward with it. Oh, throws the ball across these all his players. And the uh, the French players celebrate that mistake. It's uh, uncharacteristic from Pollock. Let's go. To be slightly deeper than they were. White. He had a fair few to choose from. Mm. Didn't find any. <laughs> line out is not straight, says the referee. Scrum Scrum Tension creeps up a, a further notch. Scrum. Last play. A few running repairs. A bit boys, of cramp. Boys, boys. Last, last, last play. I just heard. Finish the game properly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this is going to have to be all or nothing for uh, England. They're going to have the ball at this scrum, and they're not going to be able to concede possession and try and get their way, sort of a good 80 metres up the field. The uh, French 22 has not been occupied for the last 15 minutes, so... Well, could we have a finale here? This would be something worth uh, writing, no. uh, writing about. Five points down. That's... Uh, for France, I think, very late on. Sorry, say, I think it's Baptiste Brits who's uh, taken a bit of a, a knock and he's making way. So, uh, Travessier is back on in the back row for France, be it momentarily. Not long left of this game. Will Wilton's going to put the ball into this scrum. England are going to try and keep the ball uh, alive. Obviously, penalties could help them out. 
You've got to wonder what's running through Ollie Davis's mind at the moment. Probably the most high-pressure situation he's Crunch. been in so far in his rugby career. He's going to have to try and conjure up something here to, to get England any chance of victory. Wooten and Redshaw combined. Davis pulls it back. All the way out to the right hand touch line. Diving into touch. Macmillan. Logan. Up to the 10 meter line. Another 60 to go. Davis takes a huge hit. France are over the top of the ball. Referee is saying get out the way. Look like they're off their feet for a moment there. Wooten is going to have to dig in for this. Again, good strong tackles. Still they twist and turn England, still they look for an opportunity, Davis fires it out wide, Reuben Logan wants a wing up, Leave, off Lachey, his feet, Lachey. cry of Lachey from the referee, leave the ball alone, England up to just this side of the halfway line. They've got the advantage now so they can potentially fling it a bit wider. They're going to come back for the penalty, not rolling away, says the referee. So this is interesting. Do they trust their line out enough to kick to touch? I suppose they have to, in the position that they are. Going to have to try and eat up as many metres as possible. Ollie Davis is aiming for 22, I'm sure. Kick is a good one. Really good one. Really good for Monty Davis. Let's go. Numbers. Six. Six. Line out been under a bit of pressure they come down well with it to England oh what about this for a fairy tale finish into the 22 they creep stay. Once. Once. French defenders told to stay in position hands come through grapple with it the ball creeps a little bit further forward the noise of two and a half thousand people at Isha goes up another notch Will Wooten He's trying to get his hands on the ball. French are coming around. The referee tells them to stay where they are. Man on the floor. Ball is on the floor. Round the corner, England go. Five points, the difference of... The conversion as well, if they can get over the line. Sun and rain is out. Down here in Surrey. They keep it close. They're not taking too many gambles with the throwing of the pass. France rebuff. Our oh, ball is out. Referee says it's gone forward. And I think that will be it. It is. It is a French win at Isha. Disappointment. They got so far up the pitch in that final go that they almost did. Final score at Malty Road, England under 18, 24, France under 18, 29. And disappointment for the home side. Jubilation for France. What a game. What an exciting game of under 18 rugby. Fantastic. Will Roberts, your thoughts on that? Well, you wouldn't be able to tell it's a friendly, that's for sure. Both teams absolutely incentive on winning and 
France showed real character towards the end there. It was a good defensive acumen to, to manage to keep the English out, who seemed to, by all accounts, have a, a really good forward momentum through their pack. He'll uh, have to look back on uh, the end, the start of that first half, where uh, England really let France through two tries in quick succession, arguably the difference, and a uh, lot of work for Jonathan Pendlebury, Will Parkby, Mark Maple Toft has sort of scratched their heads over as they look towards uh, their game against Wales coming up, as well as the, uh, the, the Six Nations, which is uh, soon arriving too, but lots of positives to take as well. Yeah, we'll have a, we'll have a look at these tries uh, in, in the uh, in the game, and it, it was a fantastic. I mean, we've never seen England under 18 or under 18 rugby. This was a really good example. It started early in the first half. England doing some really good work. Exactly, just that quick ball and aim for Schmidt to go straight through the ruck. And uh, at that point, we uh, thought that conditions would stay relatively suitable, but we were soon proved extremely wrong. And uh, here's the, the second score again, just excellent handling from uh, England, which seemed to be the, the key to unlock the French defence, especially in that first half. Redshaw, who got his uh, try in England colours there. Again, just Rory Taylor holding up play really nicely in a well timed finish from Ben Redshaw outside Denter, who's found his place at, at full back as well. This, uh, this campaign and this was the French getting themselves back into things once again just nice handling all set up from the forward momentum that the pack gave them with the one-up runners and and collisions uh, a few before that that floating pass from uh, Matassi who had a superb game was uh, the real different of the offload from Vassaman wasn't mm. it on the inside and Takala who was scoring all of uh, the tries, a big dive. <laughs> and then England's uh, response. Lovely hold of the pass here and the release. It is just that holding up of the, the ball from uh, Connor Byrne, which really proves to be the difference here. Just draws defence. Pass laid on to his fellow. His first score of the game. And then just to round off, the you talk about crucial areas of the game. Just before half time and after half time, France won this game, didn't they? They really did. They uh, once again, it, it all came from uh, the momentum of their pack. Just seemed in places that little bit bigger, stronger than uh, than the English and was certainly the difference that was the, the score just before half time and then this uh, capitalizing off uh, English errors in the in the second half lovely interplay between Brobury and Lodro here Lodro doing ever so well to keep the ball alive and allowing for his inside outside center to touch down on the wing yeah great pick up in the conditions we had a bit of sunshine in the uh, opener of the uh, of the second half and France seemed to uh, respond exceptionally well to it two very quick scores the second one coming up now and uh, and this is where England yeah, at this point we for the French to sort of run away with proceedings but England managed to respond relatively well after this but that was the score from uh, the Lavella Tolifua. Good break uh, originally from Kante Samba. Large man moving very quickly. Difficult to stop and he uh, does well to present here. And again, quick ball, the feature. The way they were able to uh, capitalise and, and not allow England back into it. And then the final score actually belonged to England. It's the intercept along the back line. And then the, uh, the pace of young Tom Humphreys streaking. As I mentioned, as it happened, certainly a 14-point score there for England, managing to hold out France whilst also being able to uh, score one of their own. And uh, 
Good Made for read. a very exciting last five minutes, exactly. didn't Exactly. Good read of play from Humphreys and he had the, the legs to make it. The uh, French certainly celebrating in fashion in front of us. A few uh, mudlides on the field and uh, they're certainly ecstatic with the win. And there we go. There's the rainbow. There's the, uh, the lovely end to it, certainly if you're French. Fantastic work, lovely work, Will Roberts, to be alongside you again uh, at Young Rugby on all social media channels, the place to uh, find out everything you need to know about age grade and school grade rugby. And it's great to have you alongside us. Not the result that England would have wanted, but a fine game of under-18 rugby. Final score, England 24, France 29. Goodbye from us all here at Isha.